what's going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be taking a brief look at file manager what it is and how to use it so here we are on the apple documentation page for it so um, its description from them is a convenient interface to the contents of the file system and the primary means of interacting with it. Um, not really surprising, it's called File Manager after all, but it is pretty useful um, in practice uh, in your application. So we'll take a look at some of that stuff. So if that all sounds good, make sure you start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and you're into iOS, and uh, let's get into the video about File Manager. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and call this uh, Exploring File Manager. Make sure your language is Swift, of course. We're gonna stick with the UI kit and storyboard since we're not really gonna build any UI. Go ahead and create it and save the project wherever you'd like. And first things first, let's go ahead and pick our 12 Pro Max simulator. Go ahead and hit that run button to compile and launch it. And there it is. And let's expand our window here and jump into our uh, view controller file. So the first thing that I wanna go ahead and talk about is uh, the concept of the documents directory. So your application has access to the documents directory for, uh, for that app. And you can go ahead and create subdirectories in there. You can read and write files in there. and Really, you can use it for whatever you want. So if you want to create a log file or sync any type of uh, file over the air, you can definitely go ahead and do that. But um, let's go ahead and talk about how to actually how to actually write that code out. So the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is create a file manager. And um, there's actually a shared instance of it already. It's file manager .default. You can get a reference to it that way. And to get the actual path to the documents directory, um, what you can go ahead and do is you could say uh, guard let uh, URL is going to be on this manager. You can get URLs and you wanna get it for the documents directory in the user uh, domain mask. And from this, you wanna get the first URL that it gives you back in the collection. And that's why we did the guard. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is let's go ahead and print out the URL.path. And something cool that I wanna show you guys is because we're on a simulator, this document directory is actually something we can open up on our computer um, directly and see the contents of it as we read and write data. So you can see that it's actually under developer, core simulator, yada, yada, yada. So what I'm gonna do is you can actually go ahead and copy this whole URL and you can go ahead and open up terminal and you can basically say open and paste in that URL. And here is the folder um, that is being used by the simulator as the documents directory. Now, of course, on an iPhone, you would also have this in the file system on the physical device. But since we're simulating, here is finder and that directory. So that all said and done, cool. We have a path to the documents directory how do we do interesting things with this uh, file manager thing? So you can go ahead and create files, you can create directories, all that goodness. So let's take a look how to do that. So if we type in manager and let's go and type in create, you'll see all the options it gives you. So here is a create directory at uh, path, uh, rather at URL with intermediate directories, um, as well as provide attributes. So we're gonna say true for this. We're not gonna provide any attributes. And we do wanna give this a URL though. So you might be wondering, well, how do I append to a URL? So we already have the document directory here. So all we really need to do is um, perhaps append on another path component to it. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, say, let's uh, new folder URL. And for this, we're gonna say URL and we're gonna say uh, pending path component. Now let's go ahead and say this is iOS dash Academy. So now what we can do is take this folder and toss it into there. And the other error you'll notice here is that this call can throw, but we're not doing it in a do catch. So you have two options. You can do a try optional, which uh, if it fails, it'll just not give you an error. Or you can do the more correct thing and toss it into a do catch block. And should anything go wrong, you can go ahead and print it out. So let's go ahead and uh, run that and you'll see an iOS Academy folder gets created in that finder window we had. So we're still in the documents directory here. 
for the app, but we now have this iOS Academy folder. Cool. So let's uh, do that one more time, but instead of doing um, just one path component, let's go ahead and extend this a little bit. So let me actually just copy and paste this and say second sub uh, folder. And we can go ahead and instead of just appending one path component, I can go ahead and run this path component um, and just do it a couple times. And you'll see that it'll actually create uh, subdirectories. Actually, this will probably fail now that I think about it because we already have iOS Academy. Uh, but let's see. So uh, it's not going to actually create anything here because this one already exists. So what I'm going to do is we're going to change the top level here and say second test. And we should get a subdirectory hierarchy. So let me open up Finder here. And let's see. Hopefully, if I build and run, you'll see that this is going to show up. Actually, we should use this URL also. So I'm going to copy and paste that and put that right there. And in here, you'll see momentarily, we see the second, and we actually not only created uh, the top level second directory, but you can, in one command, create the full hierarchy. So that's looking good. So let's see, what else do we want to do? So let's go ahead and talk about creating a file. So now that we have this directory here, maybe we want to actually write some text into that directory. Uh, and let's say like a txt file. So there is a bunch of commands for create on here. And one of them you might have noticed is create file. So create file takes in a path. It takes in contents for that file, which could in fact be nil. And it also takes in attributes. Um, and there's, at, there's several attributes you can choose from. Um, so let's go ahead and create an empty file. So we have a, the first thing that it wants is a path. So the path we're going to do is we are going to take uh, this first folder that we created here. I'm going to get rid of this try. And we're going to go ahead and call this file path. And the data will be nil in just a moment. But we're going to say file, let file URL is going to be our new folder URL. And we're going to append a path component. And this doesn't only have to be a directory. We could say this is something like logs.txt. And what we can do now is say this is this.path, contents is nil. And for the attributes here, it tells you that it's a dictionary of, you know, file attribute key and a value. Um, we're not going to pass it anything, but if you want to see what's available to you, you can go ahead and do that and hit the dot. And you'll see there's things like um, append only, creation dates, device ID, um, you know, extension hidden, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if we just wanted to stick with like creation date, for example, you can go ahead and pass in the current date and you'll get that uh, attribute added. So let's go ahead and give this a run. And let's go back to our finder window. And under this, you now see we have this logs.txt file. Looking pretty good. We can actually even open it up and you'll notice it's an empty txt file that opens up in text edit. Pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and delete this and let's do that again. But this time we're gonna write some text to it. So let's say we wanted to write some string to this file. Well, this contents takes in data. So how do we convert string to data? So let's first create a string and say, uh, writing text to a text file. Woo, okay, so we've got this string here and you can actually go ahead and simply create data uh, out of it directly, if I'm not mistaken. You can go ahead and pass in the string and it should uh, create data without having an issue. If you go ahead and uh, throw that data there, you'll see that it probably won't complain. Let's see if it does. Uh, extraneous argument label for string. Let's see, we might not need this. And uh, I see actually this is the older way. What we want is we're gonna say data up here and we're gonna use the UTF-8 uh, encoding to get data from this string. We'll take that and make it data and we can just use it down there. And the reason this is giving me a warning is because um, you know, this call doesn't actually throw. So what we could do is we could actually get rid of this do catch and paste that in right there. So go ahead and give that a run. Let's open up uh, our finder again. You'll see a new txt file here. And this time, the string that we had converted to data has been written to this file. So if you ever wanted to have like a log, uh, a logging file for your um, user, you know, to just write logs to, let's say if you want to help them debug, you can actually continuously you know, open up this file and write to it. So pretty easy to do and honestly pretty useful. 
So now let's take a look at deleting this file. So we already know um, this is the file URL. So let's take a look at deleting something. So we can actually say manager, and I believe it's remove. So we can do remove item at, and we can simply pass in the URL. But before we do that, one thing we wanna do is let's validate uh, if that file exists. So you can say if manager file exists at a particular path, and we can pass in here the path. So we're going to say file URL.path. We can go ahead and print out this is a thing on disk. Let's go ahead and give that a run and take a look at our console. We should get that printed out. Beautiful. And now what we can do is we can try to delete it. So we're going to say try manager remove an item at the given URL. And we want to, of course, catch any errors that occur. So we are going to print out said error. So by default, we had that text file and you just saw there in the nick of time that it actually did go ahead and delete it. So we can actually do that for folders as well. So we have this monstrosity here, the second uh, dash uh, test. So what I'll go ahead and do is let's uh, append instead of this here, we can say second dash test. And we can say, whoops, that's not what we wanna actually do. Let's see, we've got iOS Academy there. Let's change a file URL. And this one we can say is second dash test. Go ahead and give that a run. And you'll see that this folder should in fact go away. Let's see if it does. Looks like it didn't, which is not good. So let's see what happens. So we've got second dash test. We definitely called a remove on it. So let's see, file URL, new folder URL, uh, I see. So we don't want new folder URL. We want that to be removed from the URL, from the documents URL root. So just be careful with your naming. We give it a RAN and there it goes. Our second URL, uh, rather second test got deleted. Let's also go ahead and delete that iOS Academy folder. All right, let me go ahead and hit Command R and switch to both of these. And you'll see this folder should disappear as well, like so. So the takeaway from this video, um, what I really wanted to convey is file manager is really easy to work with and you can do a lot of things with it fairly easily. Um, just to explore um, some of the other APIs that it offers. So you can do manager dot and you can see you can um, get attributes of a particular item, of a particular uh, um, item uh, file system. You can change the current directory. Um, you can also get you know the uh, container URL this is how you would get the contents of a particular file. So you guys saw how we wrote out a string to um, you know, that text file. And if we wanted to get that data back, we can pass in the file URL path here. So this is how you would get the actual data back. And this guy would be data. And if you take a look here at the autocomplete, it tells you this is of type data optional. So you would just convert this back to a string. So. Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys use File Manager? Do you plan on using it? Um, I personally use it quite a bit for like log type files on disk. Um, I further actually encrypt the files that I write to disk for sake of, uh, you know, security of user information. Um, and this is also used, you know, professionally pretty all over the place. So um, that's all I've got for you guys for this one. If you enjoyed the video and haven't already, drop a like down below. Helps out a lot. Leave a comment with anything, video suggestions, just saying hi. I love hearing from you guys. And of course, subscribe and hit that bell notification button to be notified for new videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.